Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I apologize about the crappy lighting in my room right now. I typically never film at this angle for any of my videos ever. But um, aside from that, today we are going to be discussing the movie Dark Phoenix. Now, I know what a lot of you are probably going to tell me. You're probably going to say, oh, the movie was crap. Oh, Rotten Tomatoes says avoid it, avoid it, because the score was so low on Rotten Tomatoes. First of all, Rotten Tomatoes is extremely irrelevant. As far as I'm concerned, you should go check out the movie anyway and formulate your own opinion without any bias, because the movie was actually not bad. It was actually really, really, really good. I would personally give it um, 8 out of 10. And there's a reason for that, because there are some negatives that I do have a little bit of a complaint about. And we will get into that when we break this film down and we review it and we look at all the pros and cons. So um, if you guys are brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all my content on here, because I'm trying to get my normal schedule back. I'm trying to post a little bit more frequently, and this is basically the start of it, I would say. So let's get into this discussion about X-Men Dark Phoenix. Also, if you saw the movie last night, be sure to let me know down below, down below in the comments what you thought of the film and what your opinion is on it. I really want a full-on discussion about this movie, the pros, the cons, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, tell me what you liked about it, tell me what you didn't like about it, I want to know. I want, you know, a full range of opinions on here, here, because everyone is entitled to their opinion, as far as I'm concerned. So, let's begin. All right, so, first thing I have to say about this film, that I wasn't expecting at all with the villain. I was expecting the Jessica Chastain villain to be Miss Sinister, Lady Mastermind, you know, the obvious picks that you would typically think of for an X-Men film like this. You would think, you know, Cassandra Nova would be the villain of this film, but that did not turn out to be the case at all whatsoever. And the villain was... You know, a group of aliens that I wasn't even expecting, but it makes so much sense. Oh, and also, um, forgive me, I have my fan running because it actually does get really hot in here. I have it on the lowest setting right now, so it doesn't affect, you know, hopefully the audio. So, the, the, the villains of the film were a group of aliens I wasn't expecting to see. But they do make so much sense. The villains of the film are the Dabari, or the Dabari? I, I, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Uh, forgive me if I butcher the name. We'll, we'll go with Dabari, okay? Dabari. That's what we'll go with, because I'm probably butchering this so bad. Let me know down below in the comments if I, comments if I butchered the name. But... Basically, from my understanding, the Dabari was a group of the Shi'ar Empire. They were a group of aliens from the Shi'ar Empire who had their home planet destroyed by Jean Grey when she was Dark Phoenix in the comics. And basically in this film, the whole idea is that the Dabari, they are looking for revenge against the Phoenix. They are looking to take the powers of the Phoenix for themselves so that they can recreate their race, their people on planet Earth. They want to recreate the Dabari race of aliens on planet Earth and take over Earth. And the whole idea of that, like, I fell in love with that concept when I started, when I really, really, really got into watching the film. As soon as I saw the name Dabari pop up in the subtitles when they were speaking their foreign language, I was just like, yes, something that makes sense. It, it was almost too perfect of a villain. It was almost too perfect of a choice for a villain for a movie like Dark Phoenix. And it was great. I absolutely, absolutely loved the choice. That was the first positive thing that I noticed out of it. 
And what I absolutely loved about this film was the relationships that were, um, that were, you know, set in stone in this movie, especially Scott and Jean, because I absolutely love Scott and Jean. I think a lot of people probably know this about me at this point, but I know that one of the biggest complaints with the film is that there wasn't enough time to, um, to basically, um, what's the word that you use, um, to, um, what's the word that you use to, I can't think of the word. It's on the tip of my tongue. Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Mm, can't think of the word. Can't think of it. It'll come back to me later. But basically the whole idea is that the main problem, I'm assuming that a lot of the craze had, was that they were complaining about the fact that a lot of the relationships in this film, there wasn't enough time in between X-Men Apocalypse and X-Men Dark Phoenix to truly show how these relationships evolved. We, like, I get it. We didn't really see Jennifer Lawrence's mystique interacting with Sophie Turner's Jean Grey at the ending of of X-Men Apocalypse. We didn't really see that too much at all, I can admit. But I think that what the film did with Scott and Jean... To me, that didn't feel too forced. It didn't feel forced because we got a taste of their relationship in X-Men Apocalypse where they're literally just, you know, 16, 17 years old high school kids and we see them interacting with each other and we see them together in that film and it basically set that in stone. And was setting up for something later. We knew it was setting up for something later um, with their relationship. But um, but by the time Dark Phoenix comes around, they are a full-fledged couple at this point. You know, they're sharing a bedroom. They're in love. They're together. It's all good. Everything's good between them. And that, to me, was probably the most satisfactory Thing that I saw out of the whole film was just seeing their relationship on screen and seeing the love between them. And I can say that personally for me, I did like Sophie Turner and Ty Sheridan's chemistry. I think that it kind of, it kind of came off as genuine to me. And the whole idea, um, I loved the fact that like with the mission in space, I loved the mission in space. I loved watching that scene. That was probably one of the most engaging scenes out of the whole entire film, I could say. And the visual effects were just beautiful. Like, I have mentioned this so many times, I thought the visual effects for the Phoenix Force were absolutely stunning. No doubt about it at all whatsoever. They were absolutely gorgeous. And I just absolutely loved it. I loved watching... Jean, Jean Grey, like, absorbing the Phoenix Force. It literally looks like it could have been right out of the comic book. So they go back to Earth after that point, and we see that Charles Xavier's ego is just on, is just through the roof at this point, because here he is receiving medals from the president, receiving all these awards, and sending his former students out there on these dangerous missions. And it's like, do you not care about their safety? Like, I was pretty damn concerned because it's like, why are you sending them out there? Are they even qualified to do this? Like, Charles, what's wrong with you? Seriously, come on now. Like, seriously, why send the X-Men on a mission in space? Oh my God. Charles Xavier in this movie, I just, I, I can't with him. Like, I was so frustrated with him throughout this whole film. I wanted to grab him by the shoulders and just shake him. I was like, somebody give me a pillow that I can scream into. Because, seriously, Charles, oh my god. Like, you, you screwed up in this movie. He royally screwed up. And we're going to get into that later. We're not even going to get into that now because there is stuff to get into about how 
he screwed up so wildly. It's like we're we're gonna get into that. Trust me. But um, but I can say that one of my favorite scenes in the film is when the X Men and their students are all out back outside the Xavier Institute and they are just partying with the students. And what do you know? They have Halston Sage who was who did work on Nickelodeon. I, I know that she's a really good singer for a fact. And 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 as soon as I saw her at the X-Men Dark Beings premiere, like the live stream, I was like, she's playing Dazzler. She's playing Dazzler. And then I saw Dazzler and I was like, yes, yes, I see Dazzler. Okay, life is good. <laughs> yeah. And I just I was like, I see Dazzler, and life is good. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. She didn't even have any lines. She was just singing, and that brought me enough satisfaction there. But the whole thing with this outdoor party that we end up seeing with Jean Grey, this is where she truly starts to lose control of her abilities, and we see her literally flinging everybody like through the woods, like, ripping trees out of their roots as she's hearing voice upon voice inside her mind. And you just see her changing into the phoenix. You see her her eyes just glowing orange. And then you see how badly Charles Xavier screwed up. You see just how bad he screwed up when he's in Cerebro and he's trying to get into Jean's head and he's trying to block away memories of her past and then the next thing you know she finds out she didn't actually kill her father he is still alive i'm like what I, that was something i wasn't expecting i thought jean killed her whole entire family and that's what charles was lying to her about but no turns out she just killed her mother and her father was struggling to figure out how to control her what to do with her, he probably sent her to quite a few mental hospitals because she said, oh, the doctors say that I'm broken. I'm assuming that Jean was in a mental hospital in the beginning when Charles found her. And quite frankly, quite frankly, Glee, you see these flashbacks of John Gray literally, like, begging Charles, you know, help her, take her off my hands, I cannot handle her, and then Jean ultimately comes to the conclusion she has to go back home to Red Hook, and we can assume it's Red Hook, New Jersey, because there was a Red Hook incident mentioned in Legion, and I think that this was that very, very incident that happened, that they mentioned all the way back during season one of Legion, Red Hook, the Red Hook incident. And I don't even watch Legion, but I did hear about it. I did hear about it. And that was more than enough for me. And then the next thing, you know, Jane, she goes back home to her dad and he's pretty damn shocked that she's there. I mean, come on now. She's showing up at his doorstep after what? How many years? Like 20 years years afterwards she shows up on his doorstep and then the next thing you know she's looking at all these pictures in her childhood home and at first it brings her comfort but then she's just pissed off because then she realizes her father essentially abandoned her he essentially threw her away gave her to the care of charles xavier and charles blocks that memory from her mind because he thought it would be too painful for her to handle. And then this leads into the battle in Red Hook. And just seeing the X-Men using their powers all working together, that was probably one of the most satisfying moments. And keep in mind, Quicksilver, he had two really good action sequences in this film. He did. He did. He had two good sequences, but... I can say one of the negatives was that there just wasn't enough Quicksilver. I can say. I can say that one negative that I do have to say, not enough Quicksilver. Not enough Evan Peters for my liking. They should not, not, they should have included him a little bit more. They should have included him a lot more than 
they did. And, and, you know, that I can actually agree with. I think that there was a huge lacking of Evan Peters' Quicksilver, and I think that is one of the many complaints that I do have. But that is just minor. We're not even going to get into, you know, like, that's just a minor thing. But the major thing that I have an issue with, we're going to get into later. Um, so... Basically, after the Battle of Red Hook, Mystique ends up dying because Jean Grey ends up causing Mystique to get killed. And as a result, Beast is just, he is, oh my god, Beast. Oh, Beast. Yeah, I don't blame Beast for being so mad. Because quite frankly, um, it, 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 he does point it out to Charles. Charles, this is all your fault. You did tamper with the mind of a traumatized eight-year-old girl, and you were expecting that there would be no consequences to come from that? Are you kidding me? And it's he's, like, literally sitting there begging Charles, you know, take some responsibility for some of it. Own up to it and admit that you were wrong. And Charles, of course, with his ego, he can't admit that he's wrong. He cannot admit he's wrong. For anything. And then we see Jean on Genosha. And she is just controlling military helicopters. And just going crazy. I mean. Like she terrified Magneto. I'm telling you. Magneto he was scared of her. He was scared. And then he finds out Mystique dies. And of course that's what's going to lead into him. He's going to want to kill her. Because quite frankly. Mystique. She had been a member of his brotherhood. For a time period. After the first class movie, and quite frankly, Glee, this is what leads into Magneto wanting to kill Jean Grey for the most obvious of reasons. And of course, Hank wants to join in with him because, quite frankly, <laughs> Hank is just mad that it cost Raven her life, quite frankly. But we knew that we were going to get a huge lacking of Jennifer Lawrence's mystique. She's done with this character. She's done playing the character. She's sick and tired of it. She came back to this film as a favor to Simon Kinberg. It was so obvious that mystique was going to go. It was so obvious that she was going to go. We all saw it coming. We all knew it was coming. And quite frankly, this is what leads into the Jessica Chastain character coming to Jean. And quite frankly, Jean's um, moments where she's just breaking down and losing it and just crying, like, that had so much emotion to it. And I felt every single minute of it. I know that a lot of people were complaining, saying, oh, it lacked emotion. Oh, Sophie Turner's acting was so stiff. First of all, there was nothing stiff about any of her scenes. There was nothing stiff about it. Coming from a person who's a theater major in college, um, who is super picky about actors and actresses in films, I didn't see anything wrong with Sophie Turner's performance as the Dark Phoenix. I don't know what the hell people are talking about. Come on now. It's like, come on. Can't film critics just stop picking everything apart and bashing on everything? Seriously. It's like, this is why comic book fans should be the ones to have their opinion matter more than critics. Because quite frankly, um, I might do a video on this some other time about why I don't trust Rotten Tomatoes or critics to tell me what a good movie is. Would you like a video on that? Let me know down below in the comments if that's what you want. Because quite frankly... And that's what I feel like doing. I feel like just going on a rant right now, complaining about movie critics. But um, I'm not going to do that. We have to break this film down, and we're already at 20 minutes almost. So, um, so quite frankly, um, I can say that by the time we get to Jessica Chastain's character meeting Jean Grey, it's already like halfway through the film, and we see. Um, we see so many references, so many Easter eggs to what the Phoenix Force did in the comics when the Dark Phoenix persona took over Jean Grey. We see the planet 
being destroyed, swallowed up by the phoenix, um, the planet that belonged to the Dabari. We see all of that. And I just thought that that was great because that looked because that was straight out of the comics. A lot of the Dark Phoenix moments were pulled straight out of the comic book. And I thought that that was absolutely amazing. The visuals just used for that alone were stunning. I can't get over it. And the next thing you know, you see Jessica Chastain's character truly being the devil on Jean's shoulder. You see her just tempting Jean to go further into her darker self. And then by the time Magneto shows up to try and kill her, you see Jean overpowering him. It's like Magneto's got nothing on her. She is like, like that metal piece from the railing that he used to try and stab her in the head by her eye. Like it was inches away from her eye and she just like dropped down and then she telekinetically shoves him out the damn window charles xavier comes into the room and she destroys his wheelchair and it literally telekinetically makes him walk up the stairs it's like oh my god charles xavier doing the walk of shame up to her it was just Oh my god, I couldn't take it. I, I, like, literally, that was Charles Xavier's walk of shame and very well deserved. <laughs> I, I was just, oh my goodness, I couldn't take it. I, I couldn't. Nint, Nint. And I'm like, I hope he learned his lesson. <laughs> I hope he learned. And the next thing you know, we see that Jessica Chastain's character, I think her character's name View or Vuck. I don't know how to pronounce any of these names because, quite frankly, I am not familiar with the Dabari, Dabari, whatever you want to call it. I'm probably butchering these names like crazy. But the thing is, is that you see Jessica Chastain's character just trying to absorb the Phoenix powers into her. And we can see that she can kill people by just, like, touching them and absorbing them. She killed Jean Grey's father. She killed the... The Jessica Chastain, first of all, Jessica Chastain's character in this film, she takes on the, um, she takes on the avatar of some woman that she met out in the woods, and, and that was that. She literally, like, killed that woman and took on her form to look somewhat human, because quite frankly, if she walked around looking the way that she did... As a full-on alien creature, yeah, Jean Grey's not going to want to talk to you. No freaking way. No freaking way. So, you see the Jessica Chastain villain just trying to absorb the powers of the Phoenix into her. And you can actually see that the more she absorbs the powers of the Phoenix into her body to try and take control of it, you can see that it's actually killing Jean before Magneto can even try to kill her. And then the next thing you know, Cyclops, Cyclops, oh my god, the way how he just, like, bolts into that room and shoots Jessica Chastain's character with an optic blast and just sent her flying. I was like, yes! I was like, yes, go Scott! I was like, yes, you fight for your woman, Scott. This movie truly did put Scott in his place and I was so happy it like really put him in his place and it made him the leader it made him actually doing stuff I mean come on now James Morrison's Cyclops like where was that years ago where was that seriously like like they couldn't have James Morrison Cyclops doing that back in the year of 2000 they couldn't have him doing that like what happened Seriously, like, Brian Singer, what did you do to Cyclops? What did you do to him in the early 2000s? But now, it's like, at this point, it's like, it's like Simon Pinford touches him and turns him into gold. I was like, yes, yes, finally a victory for me as a fan of Scott Summers. I was like, yes, this is a victory for me. It was like, finally, Cyclops is doing something. He's being a leader. He's not just being a doof. Thank God they didn't dumb him down. 
I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Simon Kinberg. But the thing is, is that this then leads into the battle on the train where they're all imprisoned and imprisoned by the United States um, Army, I would say, and then the Dabari come to try and continue because when you want the powers of the Phoenix Force, you just never give up. You just never give up that easily. And then they ultimately end up coming together. This movie truly did feel like a mixture between Captain America Civil War and something else. I just can't think of the film, but it was very cosmic and it was great in that sense. And the, the train battle, like at first I was worried about that because the original battle was supposed to end in outer space. So I was worried that I was going to be disappointed with the battle on the train, but I really wasn't. Like, you see the X-Men just coming together with the members of the Brotherhood to use their powers to save Jean Grey's life. Out of an effort to save her life from these aliens who are coming to try and kill her. And it was just so great to see them all coming together. You see Storm displaying even more power than anything she's ever displayed in any film. She's even more powerful than she was in X-Men Apocalypse. Like, I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was amazing. And the next thing you know, you see G you see Charles Xavier entering Jean's mind. And it's like, he finally admits he's wrong. And Jean says, don't worry about it. Because I know what you did for me was out of love. And oh my god, I'm gonna get choked up just talking about it. Because oh my god, I can't. Like, sorry, I I'm just gonna get emotional talking about this because this was just the most emotional movie for me. Like, I walked out of the movie, like, I didn't cry watching it, but I think I'm... <sighs> it's taking everything in me not to cry right now just talking about it because it was so beautifully done. And the next thing you know, you see Jean Grey, like, fully awakening to fight the Dabari. And it was just so incredible. I, I, I couldn't take it. Like, she was kicking ass, taking names like nobody's business. She was just, like, proving I am not weak. I am like, I was like, yes. Like, that gave me something to root for. No doubt about it. I just 100% loved it. And then you see her and Jessica Chastain facing off, and Jean realizes in order to save her friends from the Dabari, she needs to she needs to absorb the powers of the Phoenix back into her to prevent Jessica Chastain from killing her and killing everyone on Earth. So she fully, fully becomes Phoenix. She just fully becomes Phoenix. And the expressions on her face, like these cold, this cold look in her eyes. I'm pretty sure I saw that look after Sansa killed her when Sansa Stark was about to kill Ramsay Bolden on Game of Thrones. That was the same look she wore when Ramsay Bolden was killed on Game of Thrones and she fed him to the dogs. That was the same look she wore, I'm telling you. But Jean fully submerges herself with the powers of the Phoenix Force and she's in space. And they just assume she's gone. They just assume she's dead. And that's what I at first thought, too. But then by the time the ending of the film came, we don't see a grave with her name on it. We see them renaming the school the Jean Grey Institute for Higher Learning or something like that, which was an actual thing in the comics. They named it the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. And we see Charles going into retirement. We see that it actually ends on a very positive note. and. By the time the the final shot comes, we just hear Jean Grey's voiceover. We hear her speaking about how this isn't the end of her. This isn't over. She is not done. She is not over. She is not gone. And we see a phoenix just, like, flying through the skies in Paris. And I was just like, yeah. How much money are you willing to bet that that Phoenix is Jean, and she's coming back to Earth, and that's how she's alive at the ending of Days of Future Past.
how much money are you willing to bet that that is the case? And those were basically all my positives. Now, the only negatives that I did have truly were the lacking of Quicksilver. We already got into that. But the other negative that I did have, and this is something that kind of boggles my mind and kind of annoys me just a little bit about it, was the lack of acknowledgement of the um of the Phoenix Force being used in X-Men Apocalypse, because we saw her tap into it. And I think that Simon Kimberg just assumed that we would know to a certain degree. Like, I just knew to a certain degree that that was Jean Grey tapping into the Phoenix Force and calling out to it to use its power temporarily to defeat Apocalypse. And the space mission is what causes her to become fully submerged with its power. But the problem is, the film didn't really do a good job of explaining that. And that, to me, was probably the much bigger issue. That was the much bigger problem for me personally. And other than that, I thought it was great. So I think the film, 8 out of 10, at the least. It's a B-plus movie. It's not by any means horrible, like X-Men The Last Stand. It's not you know, the, it's not like, it's not going to be anything like Logan ever was, but I can say that it was a very watchable film, and it was highly enjoyable, and I highly recommend that you see it and that you give it a full chance, because ultimately, this is it. This is the end. This is the end of the Fox X-Men franchise, and Ultimately, this is the film that closed the book. It closed it. It's done. So let me know down below in the comments what you thought of the film. And I will talk to you all soon. And if you are brand new, be sure to subscribe to get all my content. Bye, everyone.